Now, the surprising finding is that when you look at underground glucose, underground colonies in general, black or plastic, you see that these deliveries are as high or even higher than what you see. And that's something you may start to not expect because there is a tiny way difference between the two markets, and you would actually expect the borrower to try to benefit from the cheaper funding, especially. That's kind of the idea of seeing what kind of inefficiencies are there, which are leading more to put underlying securities into the GC bar. So, um, the paper basically has three parts. The first part is analyze this general collateral of funding uh, prices. And you can think of as aspect of if you don't want to see and price determining the more. So you have what I call mobility, how much of one's black and how much of the position. But then you always have what I call opportunity cost. That's kind of the price of these of the different groups there. Now the second part then was that a traditional microstructure very time uh, model that tries to make these short term funding choices to what we are serving in the long the idea is if there are certain what I call spread frictions in short term money markets, this is creating inefficient collateral prices on the upper the water. So he's facing additional costs that he's going to internalize, and he does feel that he's having higher transaction costs in the other line of the market to his clients. That's kind of a little bit of control from the markets. And then if I have time, we can look at some of we look at patterns which are different in Europe compared to the US in one way to markets. So, yeah, so. Um, in terms of contribution, I think there are two parts. One is on more than money markets, how these choices look like, but then also on the new Okay, so to um I hear of the setting, I think um, these short term funding markets are getting increasingly important, um, not only going back to the financial crisis, but also recent work that has basically looked at how these markets have become really the predominant source of funding for banks and whether they are inefficient, as said, for example, in the transmission of money. So, for my analysis, I use the section of the data of the euro area. The euro um, it's a bit more than 10 years, but then I also use that data to get a comparison between what we see in the euro area and compare that to what we see in the US. All right, so to give you an idea of how these collateral prices look like, so as I said, there are two basic components that drive these collateral choices. One is what I call the quantity aspect, the other is the price. So quantity would be uh, the ability of how much of one that a dealer has in its event. So if you're a dealer and you're going to subscribe to auctions, you're going to have a lot of these ones in your next week, and you need to follow them to buy your business. Now, if you sell a lot to, for example, by old investors, or if you sell a lot to central banks as part of the programs, your holdings actually go down. So you have less of those ones if you actually go and buy it. So we can see what we can move that starts to team that sends the second part to the baby. So if you look at that graph, you see what you see here is big, it would be falling into the pockets of bonds, each general collective basket relative to the time since lobby. And what this point two means is that basically 20% of what we actually all at once is delivered each general collateral basket on the first day of the year. So basically, it's quite a sizable amount. So what you see here is that basically the delivery volumes are highest before the year of the year. Then they deep time from the year of the cycle, but then they tend to keep again around the openings. The openings have smaller volumes, but similar patterns. And then you lose the So I think that's very consistent with the idea that uh, leaders who strike the options have large holdings of a little longer than they want to But as I said, if you take part of the holdings, then you will lose the little ones in the general 
So similar figures, but now differentiating between those accents that temperament and energy emerges as part of the beauty and comparing those to ones that temperament is going to produce. So what you see is that from the 30 days in those games, uh, which actually makes sense because there's a certain lack of pure implementation for dependence which prevents separation from actually purchasing new emissions. However, well, basically, after around the month afterwards, you see that the liberties of those ones that are not purchased are actually higher because the banks will be more those ones and they're getting free, so they're going to impose more of those bonds to each other. Um, so I think this is also consistent with the scarcity of the banking rates. Now, let's look at the price on the individual. How much incentive does the bank have to optimize its funding decision? Well, one intuitive way to look at that is we put special needs. We basically compare what's the funding cost that I put to one need to the general political basket, and you compare that to what would be the special rate, the cheaper rate I'm going to get if I post that security into a special one. So you can see, oh, the bigger the rate difference between the two markets, the more effort the bank puts in to find a suitable counterpart and benefit from the optimized cheaper funding. Cheapest we put, right? Similarly, you just look at what's available to be posted in the basket and you compare basically what's the cheapest one to, to actually one high. But I think the idea is pretty much the same the more special. But one is because of, for example, for union skills and liquidity, the larger the difference, so there's no incentive to join the category. And that's quite intuitively what you can see graphically as well. We can see a delivery volume for different levels in the human opportunity part. And you see what you would intuitively expect. You see that the degrees are relatively high for the low levels. Even cost components. But as it gets more and more expensive and the rate difference widens, you actually see that the little one is going down. But I when you look at uh, what does the bank in the group, if they're actually facing high cost, you actually see that the government reposting is on the ransom. So I think this like a little space if you will, the trade off between quantity and price, there's a declining tenor that speaks to the idea that. If prices are bigger, I'm putting in more effort to find suitable counterparties in that cheap funding. But because I'm having so many other purchases at hand, I still need to finance them at a general collector rate uh, that tends to be Now, empirically, what I'm doing is I'm going to move to different aspects of the community. I think very intuitively, the bigger the option, the more I'm going to go to the industry. In the more time it has to see it's the option we will be going to the opportunity cost, the bigger the spread difference between the two markets, the lower I will be going. And then if you compare down to the authorized purchase before, then you can see that authorized purchases are more likely to be which you can see at first by the pricing, but then says that you're seeing about a bank that will work with the human security. And access to the chief spectrum of the stress was still the So, moving to the second part of the question of how do these beautiful funding policies connect to the underlying government? So, from the question of I'm just gone, you can see how we can manage how to construct the model of the United States. And operating the market basically like the economy. And this then basically participated the government of the auction and built up an event in the auction. Um, and this event was sort of three years to the first one is distributed the world to the ones to the people the measure that are not participating, that what I call the distributor in pay, but then that is with the only is one for the competition. That's really the market. So during this initial distribution phase, there is actually moving one from the test in some so it's going to need to finance the position, which then can be by accessing the new 
but that same thing is going to be made across the other thing, including the ones that are out that same thing. And if that goes to the right part, you can affect you a lot of times to get the right part. Now, in the second, the bank actually has the option to place the operands into the future of the regular or into the second. If the bank is going to be here to be into the second class, it's actually benefiting from the cheaper market. Because early in the room, they use the bank to be cheaper. And they're also cheaper across the board. Which basically made it increasingly more difficult for the bank to find suitable company parties that are ready to be willing to offer this very cheap market. So that was a trade off between the company and the benefit of earning. This gives you kind of what you would share that the bank is going to find it with that effective, and you can pick up that funding, but we would be done for the right for me. Let's actually see that the bank is able to find it, especially when the people would just go that way. Uh, and then the optimization pretty much follows the framework. So you have the single periods and that period, which one carry the third, and then the bank is maximizing the trade. Yeah, in fact, the utility of the term may well be the initial point of view, which means the brain will be expected to be the term may well be the new point of view, and not the more trade. So you can see what you have. And then the new portfolio having a certain sort of mark star, but then it plays by the model on the 13th, the party would be better on that one. That is the way the definition of 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 which basically increase the you know, quantity of under one that is really effective. And in the opportunity cost, that the price difference between the market, on the point that you can expect the end of the So when you look at that in theory, from this data that we described from the bottom part of the particular target of the model, it's actually higher at the back of the north one. Into general collective rates that are and it increases the price difference from pricing for the product to the highest. So I think that's kind of the connection between what the bank is doing with the trade and how that exactly depends on the price. So, very quickly, towards the end, um, just looking at some of the empirical sectors we know from the US. This is now um, one of those, the traditional on the ground, off the ground, and what part is the documented by our participants for the US, which basically tells you that on the ground securities tend to trade at higher price, lower, lower than otherwise, very similar. I think when you want the same thing from your area, yes, it will be not seen. Now, what is one explanation for the over of this? Um, so, this is my first day in one day, but there are others as well, particularly active with the superior with the village to active with the community. So, here you see that basically the other ones tend to have lower connection for lower than not a threat compared to the other ones. Now, if you compare that to what we see in my data and in your area, you actually see a very different evidence. You actually see that the operands in your team tend to have The opposite to what you would see in the US. But the reverse of these transactions are between the British attributes of one run and opera between your area and And I think one interesting thing is. If we look at people that will be factored in the prices in the US, um, if they basically result in the retail level three points, are basically the increase of on the run bonds for each general director market in the US, we can see that banks are going to be substantially more in the on the run bonds in the general director market in the US. Now, if we look at the observations that for the US, 
they're just here as much more. So thanks to the people who want to do what you want to do with you. The special section actually benefited me from taking the time. And this may explain why my bank benefited me from cheaper funding and actually pass on this money benefit because the rest of the rock are in charging the work. Well, for all the land securities, whereas in your area, by facing higher cost of funding costs, banks require a higher compensation in one market, which basically takes the least. And I think with that, I'm going to just continue as we have the time. But I think the main idea is we need to look at the quality of funding for citizens and how they relate to long term funding. So the paper um, practically derives uh, with a very very hard time um, and, and a comprehensive data set. It's something which I think hasn't been documented before. I think it didn't see. Um, that is at least in the new area, and it's quite a substantial amount of funding that comes back to general data report, which has only the incentive to do the experiment that here that those amounts should be very, very large in the beginning skills and that would be relatively cheap to find the status of those from the new So this kind of feedback. The idea of the and um, how the principle that are concept of the world of that's works like which specialist of the I think it's actually rather concept of the which makes a lot of sense and I think and, and then it should be turned out like the um Ottoman ones is actually um that's not a lot of that they bought and the should be most on the issue to give people the base of the type of um that's uh it's not really that that uh the data in the very but that the analysis for the European market market has having uh vehicles which have been the large standards um or the entire sample of the underlying or Okay, so the general standard that are something going into that this sensitive um, general electric planning can be called the factory modification, which already has been pretty much our line on the latest work around the front end, which is not that beautiful. And it's where the housing of the range here is that it's high on the lot of the high on the lot of the dark print in the high on the beds, but also these particular range steps. So we all are commenting on certain types of these patterns. I wanted to sound a little bit more about each of the patterns. So again, it's starting to pull uh, with the model of the type of content. Um, and the that also is, I think, a lot of connection that was sent in large and we did the numbers. So, a lot of technology was excluded and then that's the issue of the institution of that kind of operating. Um, and then before actually going into the like, um, set of planning of the autistic uh, world, um, and so that uh, actually very not really divided, but what actually drives the planning to do is the report, but the main difference here is um, trying to really know not really try to involve to provide both the methods that have got to start higher to talk about planning. And then also um, I think it's and reaction. And then the other one um, the driver is this um opportunity cost this uh growth slash uh measurements uh bring up the option that can affect or stay the um the and yeah at this point I would like um then I'm very attractive to um have some large 
wrong with our sense of um, we expect we will the same so the side is is the way it's it makes sense. It should be the same sharp the way that that same style the department. But the other thing is, I think I'm also very likely to buy the microstructure in that this doesn't give you the way to the way that it should be like. Then one would say I also try to take this coming more in that narrative of the big. They need to do that. Some of these French just the last thing that they tell you how to do is doing that. That in just some open that the real market, but a certain bank buys that. So I don't know how how to keep it open to that with the daily. But I don't think that what is actually driving this kind of pattern that we have to deal with in both the market section. The expression now that the expression can be added to the idea actually um, that this um, expansion of it, I would like to come on the right on this budget dialogue. Um, here, you know, the idea that you can have people that start the process at the end of the lower structure, which means to us, that's what you might be doing here to exploit the rest of our idea. However, once they came to me, they were thinking about the sort of compared to the market that we have found in the global community, where I don't know if it's more or less very British, and it's very loud, it's really so. It could be an important, it's important to be able to think apart. I think it's not going to take a lot of the things that we can do. But it's also maybe the whatever they can do to have a good point is not a good time how somehow he is part of it. Okay, um, then the second step actually is the um, stage for the technical pipeline. So, um, then I'm going to need um, to make sure that excited delivery, actually, um, see delivery, um, and actually increase the last one to get the last one. And again, our idea that we have to check it, maybe it's still in the chip, and we want to find a big thing that the fish will come in and be more sharper. The lowest of the world bottles would have been actually are talking about the addition here from like the right to when we have a market data on the right to with being more passionate, reacting and being different than kind of different like that would be made completely on the front one, which kind of makes less liquid, which should somehow make it less specialized. So it's not even to me exactly with the without more technical device and uh so if there are ways to be on the that should also like charge that the provision for the pricing part of the model. Um, and I mean, maybe one way you already mentioned that uh, soon is the contribution to the model of one. Uh, So one moment I had is that the one thing is about climate change. I had a very effective block in the year, general special thing, but you don't consider the choice of the actual as well the one and the popular one that I was in the I know that that is probably actually not quite a bit, perhaps that helps to deliver certain 
this is actually the case that it might already be so in the next so that I can sort of have a local distribution to a place of other. Um, and then second, uh, the comment from the audience is that um, very hard to do, but I, I just tried to introduce my feedback and I don't want to go. Um, I that was very fun. Um, the thing is, the fact that it's actually an immunity cell. Um, and there are some dogs in the apartment. So I don't know whether that's a dog or not in the test or the dog in the community. Um, so we can't say something about that anymore. That is probably the part of changing more of us. Um, as a theory, but I don't think it's that sort of extension. Okay, so um, the listeners of what data application we probably have to um, get the technical people to start the market for this thing. So um, I'll start the headline for the first few minutes. Thanks for so I think I'm the right way where I want to have to do All right. Well, I think the good relationship for the library is so when we think about it, there are two risks. There is the default risk of the art, and there is also the lack of very good in black of and so that in fact, we will very And we can. And to respond, we think that there is a right direct correspondence between the risk and the That's the requirements here that would be quite specific and straightforward. But that's what you think. You can work on two parameters. They will tell you that they actually see how many people can see them. And they don't form the question of the way to be And I found it as a part of that uh, I was thinking about how to do it. So uh, here I will say I'll try to do it as well. I don't think I need to be done by the people. I think one thing that I can try was making this something different from environmental environment. But when the world falls, there is a relation at you. So the collateral is worth more than the even amount, then the excessive amount is typically transferred to the back to the borrower. So that uh, the lender does not gain a, gain a big windfall uh, gain from selling expensive collateral. And uh, this is possible we don't have a decision that will magnify the air and So there are two different questions to be asked. Uh, I will start with the first. So how does collateral affect uh, the parameters of the repo queue? I think about it in the following way. So there are two identical workers who have different collections, and they come to the same lab. And now the question is, what parameters of this collateral should the lab look at so that they can determine the parameters of it? Or if we think about, uh, about uh, the quality of collateral or the point of view of the return distribution of this collateral, should we look at the full distribution, should we look at some Summary statistics, how many, what should they be? So, in this sector, I find that relative to the second short book are necessary to special statistics of the quality of collateral or report. And uh, you know, that is this is uh, intuitively a quantile in the distribution of returns. And the expected short book is the expected value within this quantile. And in the industry, there is also a debate whether one is better than the other. Well, here I try to show that they are both necessary because they stand for different types of the risk. Intuitively, the expected shortfall is more related to the most given default, while the value of the one time is more related to the probability of default. And it is important for comparative studies because I know that when the expected shortfall increases, both the air cut goes up and the rate goes up. So both more collateral is demanded and the interest rate will be discounted. 
by contrast with bandwidth risk when the collection becomes riskier, more collection is required, but so much more that the game becomes less risky and the interest rate goes down. So these are two different types of risk, and putting them together uh, provides the better answer to what the care pattern emerged. Now, about this and this question, the war was properties. Most uh, classical papers were written before I was born. I, I, it's hard to see something completely new, but at least I managed to see something weird. So, while we see four or space high here, that's not really logical. I show that it is quite hard to say something clear about whether the interest rate will be higher or lower. It depends on the uh, exact properties of the equilibrium. And uh, it can go either way. We'll see in the comparative settings. But what I can say more clear is that the borrower who has a more profitable investment opportunity is willing to borrow more and is willing to pay for it more. So when I have a more profitable investment opportunity, I will try to get more money to invest and then find the pay with it which is it drives interchangeability between the haircut and the recurring. So uh, very quickly about uh, what the literature is trying to talk about. I indigenize the fact of collateral quality in haircuts and grades and uh, try to say something to the value that you can expect to show for the way. I have an empirical test, which uh, with uh, quite interesting uh, data, I'll talk about it more later. And uh, there are some other uh, there are some other uh, empirical papers that uh, that try to test different different models. Adam has one, uh, and uh, uh, this thing is a bit is a bit normal. So I will I will try to move, say what the difference is to the data. And I think that my framework. Helps to resolve some empirical puzzles, like for example, in 2022, yeah. So they find that uh, when we look when they look at uh, mm -hmm. trenches, so they look at the same more than the same lender, and all the hits at the same time they put more than the And they do the set of hits that are collateralized by trenches of the same securitization. So when the trench is more senior, the haircut is lower, well, because the risk is lower than that. But surprisingly, the interest rate is also lower. And they ask what can be the reason for that. And I know that uh, uh, my model gives a simple explanation that it has something to do with its factor short form. So, uh, about the model itself, it's a very simple two period model with everybody being risk uh, and uh, there are two cases, more and better. This is without loss of uh, without loss of reality. But more is penniless. It has a private investment opportunity, but doesn't have money to invest. What has a one unit of financial on financial asset worth one dollar? So what is this investment opportunity? It's binomial and cost of return is key. We invest X. If everything goes fine, we get one plus one times X. If everything does not go fine, we get nothing. And this happens with probability. Now, what about the pledge uh, financial asset? Uh, it has a return R, which is distributed in a general way so that the derivative is continuous and it's independent from the investment opportunity. Okay. Now, what can we say about the lender? I assume that the lender is competitive, which means that has zero bargaining power, a deep pocket, and can invest in a riskless asset that would return one plus R N, or can give money to our world. So the alternative assumption would be that the number basis and perfectly elastic supply funds when the rate one plus R N is kind of the same. So when one builds a model of repo, there will be two big questions. That one needs to pr propose some answers to. So, one question would be why is the land so necessary at all? Why does not land just give all the money to the borrower without any land? And my answer will be different synonyms. So, the borrower thinks that the product is quite, it has quality and beauty and uh, quite low, quite low probability of pay. And the lender does not think so. 
But that is a perfect discrepancy. The uh, probability of failure is high, and therefore his reluctance to lend money to the borrower. The borrower does not provide the collector. About the collector of returns, the reason they both agree. Therefore, the lender says, Okay, you give me collector. I know that I break even. You do in whatever investment you want. So, this is why uh, collector is useful. Now, the second question would be why does the borrower not sell the asset instead of the lender? And this is really a very um, unpleasant question because it's hard to it's, it's hard to address it properly. Um, my answer here would be the following. So suppose that you are a borrower and you have this pledgeable asset which you can also sell. And you're waiting for an investment opportunity to arise. And once it arises, there is a wind of opportunities, which is quite short. Other, other banks, people, whatever, can find this investment opportunity as well. So you need to invest right now. If you want to invest right now, you can either pledge your asset as a collector, or you can sell it in the stock market. But if you sell it in the stock market, nobody knows why exactly you're selling it. The person that you meet in the stock market might think that you have private information about what is happening in this. And therefore, you will have price feedback when selling it. Now, if you instead pledge it in the repo, you sell it, but you also promise to buy it back with the same exact institution, which means that your lender knows for sure that you're going to get the collateral back, which does not generate any information about the security itself. Therefore, you will not have any price impact if you go in the real market. So this requires the liquidity of collateral to be less than per, for example, like you see that from the lower space. So this is my explanation. An alternative one would be that you're a bank and you have to call the banking group or whatever, and this security you can pledge in the report, but uh, you don't want to call them. But the rate for this one is more. Okay, now the utility functions of the borrower and the lender. So, first of all, the borrower borrows a bond and invests to get the return R, uh, broad, sorry, and the face interest rate up. So, this is the return of what the borrower gets, and everything goes fine, which happens with perfectly fine on TV. If everything does not go fine, what happens is that the bank sells the collateral, getting R. And trying to cover one plus R and so this is the amount promised to the bank, promised to the lender. So if this excess amount is high, meaning bigger than zero, which means that the price of the collateral was high, then this excess amount returns back to the borrower. What about the lender? The lender, when, when everything goes fine, gets back the promised amount, and notice that the probability. PL and PPI are different. This is the difference of release. If uh, things don't go well, then the lender is trying to cover the due amount, but cannot get more than the price of the collateral at time one, which is that the borrower has limited liability. Okay. And uh, also, opportunity losses of involved opportunity money to the borrower numbers. All right, so starting from this, uh, from this utility functions and solving the problem, yeah, first we will define the, the haircut as, so one plus haircut will be defined as the value of the collateral divided by the amount of planet world. It's closer to the, this will be the of the margin, but they have one to one correspondence to the haircut, so we will call it haircut. And uh, I define equilibrium as a contract such that the four were switching the team. Which is this one is maximized subject to the lender breaking even. How will this look? Well, this is the credit service of the competitive lender. In the coordinates of the interest rate and haircuts, these are all combinations that have that give the lender the opportunity to break even. And the borrower will maximize its utility function subject to the lender breaking even. And I show that there will be, at least under certain conditions, there will be uh, a unique equilibrium. 
So, uh, coming back to, uh, to the equilibrium, that's how it will look. This is the equilibrium we're right, it's equilibrium here. And there is some intuition behind it, but what is important for us is there is no trace of the distribution of the richer distribution of the collateral, except for what is summarized by expectation of form and value at risk. Okay. So uh, this is this is important for us. So expected short ball analytics are in this case uh, some um, sufficient statistics. Now I want to do comparative studies, and uh, I want to do comparative studies for value at risk and expected short ball only the other of the two things, which is hard because you know, statistically, they are very much related to the quantile and the expectation with the quantile. So I try to separate them. And for that, I come up with something that I uh, clumsily call quantile deserving spread and over the quantile spread. One thing is uh, all the quantile things, I will distribute the probability mass towards more extreme events. This I call quantile preserving spread, although some people told me that in English language spread means something that's expressed in two directions. Sorry for that. Uh, and um, the other one I call the, from the expectation with the quantile fix, but I move the pressure. So this is all the quantile spread. So in this way, I try to separate the two. Uh, empirically, it's very easy to just uh, control for one when regress on the other. <laughs> so when I do comparative studies, uh, medically, I show that when the expected short fall is higher, both the rate and the haircut are higher, but with value at risk, doesn't work. The haircut increases, but the rate increases. So why is that the key? The idea is that um, the first quarter addition is formed in such a way that the probability of the fall is fixed. Now, when we shock value at risk, we shock the probability of default. And when the probability of default changes, the equilibrium demands that we return it back to a lower initial value. How do we do it? We demand more collateral. Okay, we demand more collateral. We return the default probability back to the same level. But now what happens is with a, with a bigger amount of collateral, the law of given default has decreased. And therefore, now the deal is less risky. And that's why the interest rate goes down. So basically, we overreact to an increase in value at risk. So that the, the repo rate goes down to compensate for it. That's what is happening. Uh, now I do compare the settings for the borrower for the borrower um, properties. I show that the return on the borrower stroke increases the repo rate and decreases the haircut, which is exactly what I said at the beginning. You are trying with maybe higher rate if your lender gives you more money. With the, uh, the default probability of the lender. Uh, well, yeah, but it's clear a lender, a borrower that is riskier will place more collateral, but the interest rate will go either way, dependent on the elasticity of the collateral return distribution in the point of equilibrium. Now, I'll try to treat it as a um, testable hypothesis, and uh, I'm using data here from Moscow Exchange. Uh, it's the interbank repo data registered through the platform of Moscow Exchange. From 2013 to 2016, this are individual reproduced. I see with the home term, uh, gray, hair, but they so everything except for what happened to this deal post back. I don't know whether they were involved or not. Actually, nobody does. And uh, I matched this with the uh, with the uh, balance sheets and the sort of credit ratings. And uh, yeah, uh, this the probability is the nice thing about this data. Of course, it came at particular cost to me, but uh, that's that's not discussion. So what I do is I try to run this uh, to run a very direct uh, regression of uh, the variables that are interest here. So let's focus on the credit risk, effective job for the benefit risk. So credit risk of the borrower corresponds to a higher uh, haircut and at least uh, where it is submitted to a higher rate for it. Notice that uh, in different specifications, uh, the sign can change. Maybe not specifically significant, but remember that I don't have 
I don't have a specific uh, prediction about uh, the effect of credit risk on the repo rate. The interesting part is that it's such a small and relative risk, and then the cap of the repo rate exactly in the manner as it was predicted, which I honestly did not expect at the moment when I started testing the model. For me, it was a bit of uh, a bit, a bit of messy. And uh, here is an accurate thing: the good thing is. So one prediction of my uh, of my work was that when the borrower has a more profitable investment opportunity, he borrows at a higher interest rate, the lower here. But then, how to measure this uh, return on the investment opportunity of the bank? And then uh, the idea was that. Why do banks borrow the repo market? They borrow to cover the liquidity needs. So if I can somehow cross the liquidity needs, even in a probably imperfect way, uh, what I did was I looked at the, the amount that the bank borrows across all borrowers in the repo market, both in the interbank and outside the interbank, across all securities, and how much it lends to everyone. Uh, in the interbank market of that day. And I think the net amount of borrowing of that day is a proxy for the liquidity needs of the bank. And uh, using this liquidity needs as a proxy for the return of investment opportunity, so how desperate I need this money, I feel that when I in general borrow more, the repo rate is higher and the haircut is lower, which means that when I want to borrow more, and by the way, this is with borrower lender security needs the bank everywhere. So it means that more than average, I borrow, right? But then I kind of borrow with a lower pair at the end of my repo rate. And this holds even when I control for uh, this particular deal, uh, the amount of work in this particular deal. So it's not that you can't really pick up the amount of work. So this is very nice because it's in line with the um, some somewhere somewhere it's significant and somewhere significant like some of the effects, but in line with the uh, with the with predictions of the model. So that's it. I'm over time. Sorry for that. I have to wrap up. I rather just didn't expect the short for a long and uh, yeah, and uh, uh, thank you on the report to the Q and A. I left a lot of doors open there for questions. And uh, yeah, let's see how we work with this. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Shreya Adam, and I'm the the board. And I'm very excited to be here to discuss this paper. So, Dimitri, we're going to do a great job explaining the models. So, I'm only going to briefly go over the research question and make findings of the model. So, the research question is actually threefold. Um, so, there's a lot of empirical work on individual contract pricing, and in any that empirical work, you see like people look at the haircut and the interest rate, which you need to remember. Um, and it's really, really hard to kind of disentangle the mutually what's driving the haircut versus the interest rate because there's a lot of moving parts, right? You've got a borrower identity, a lender identity. These things are collateralized. We have the collateral quality that's coming into play. So there's a lot of moving parts. So it's really, really hard to disentangle what might be driving the haircut versus the interest rate. And so Dimitri has this very nice, easy and simple model, but I actually think it's quite a rich model that tries to answer these three questions. So, which measures the collateral quality are most relevant to refund pricing? So, we talked about value at risk and there's no fault. And do these measures affect pricing in the equilibrium? And then, finally, how does the borrower's identity affect this pricing? So, in his model, he has a static security model with a borrower. And the bar is located in minus five of the repo. And as an empiricist, I always like to think about what the asymmetric information is in the model. And the asymmetric information is between the model and the lender on the probability of this project yielding a So the bar, the borrower's probability of success is one minus PB, and the lender's probability of success is one minus PL. So that's how asymmetric information is the model. And based on these parameters, the borrower's lender, the borrowing lender is going to negotiate the rates, RAP, and the haircut each year. Now, 
make sure you kind of look. I use them all and I don't know what we're going to really nice about this is that he develops these zero hypotheses and so you take them to the data. And the data are very cool and so you get a pretty good one step of it's just even more at all. And this is bilateral with the data. So it's one way to cover up some of the problems we have with US data. You know, you can see the borrower's identity, you can see the lender's identity, you're going to negotiate directly, you're going to talk about what the collateral quality is, the interest rate, etc. And so if any of you are familiar with some of the US free markets, you don't have to worry about the GC market or social clear or anything like that. So it's in some sense like a very nice data set to kind of test this production. Okay. okay, so the first two findings that I thought were really cool in the paper was the first was that borrowers of the lower project return. So borrowers know that their project are kind of is it going to succeed at the lower part? Sorry, the borrowers that have a lower project return are going to agree to pay more, borrow more, have a higher pay on their cut, and have a lower rebuild. And then the borrowers with a higher PL, and the lender actually thinks the probability of the project is going to succeed are going to agree to a higher pay cut, but this is the measure the repo rate might actually be higher and the lower. So, this is really one of the novel predictions in the model. And you can actually see that sometimes the haircut and the repo rate might not actually go in opposite directions. Most of the time, in the fearful work, most people think that if you have a higher haircut, you have a lower interest rate. But he actually finds in his model that there are some settings where that might not be the case. And then another big contribution of the model is this idea of entering uh, expected shortfall and value of risk to think about collateral quality. So value of risk, I like to think of as how low can you go in terms of collateral. And the expected shortfall is essentially my expected loss if I were to have this collateral. So value of risk also may be roughly proxy by the like volatility. A lot of people do that as well. So interestingly, in the model, it says that the portfolio with a higher set of shortfall, keeping value of risk constant, will have a higher haircut and a higher repo rate. So this is really interesting because we have a haircut and a repo rate are going in the same direction. Now, keeping expected shortfall constant, if we put value of risk, you find that the portfolio with a higher value of risk has a higher haircut but a lower repo rate. So now we're going to take these predictions with the data. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I have three comments on the paper, and I know this paper, um, when I talked to Dimitri, he said it's been the case that the model has been, uh, he's thought about the model a lot, he's getting ready to submit the paper, so I was trying to think about how to give comments that would be like benefiting about this pitch, this next virtual, maybe what a three might say. And so I basically have two comments on positioning and interpretation. So the main contribution I think of the model is to be able to disentangle this effect of value at risk and expect a shortfall. I'm sure I was looking at all the theoretical models. I don't think there's a Android paper that does that. And so because he has these nice theoretical predictions, I thought you could really use in rich data from the Moscow Exchange to show that these theoretical predictions exist in the data. So I had some ideas of how I might be able to do this really easily to set up your accounts. So he has this very rich cross section of collateral quality. I um, think he provides like 600 different types of collateral that are used in this, uh, this repo data. And so I was thinking maybe we could use that in those different types of collateral to show this difference between bar and structure short of all the data. So maybe think about collateral type. So I was thinking we would expect value of risk to matter more for collateral and higher the ultimate. And then we would expect accepted shortfall to matter more with collateral. We would expect a larger loss if they have like a subprime mortgage that maybe not doesn't have like necessarily higher volatility, but we would expect higher losses. And so maybe we can use this in the data. Can we somehow take collateral and have either higher volatility and show that we get this result of higher haircuts and lower rates? But if you have collateral, which is like a very high expected loss or something that can be you know, it's like very, very poor credit quality in terms of collateral. Maybe it doesn't necessarily have higher volatility. Do you get those higher haircuts that you'll The uh, next one I had on positioning was this very interesting result that in the model, 
to make sure you find when borrowers of worse credit quality will pay a higher haircut, but not necessarily a higher repo rate. And this, I think, contradicts an existing theory that we usually see that haircut is usually collateral specific and the rate is borrower specific. So I was thinking about ways you could use this data to directly test this prediction and using this data. And so he had the Russian government bonds with the technical model. I don't know if their information is sensitive, but I've seen it in your data that you can see if you were to really condition on those collateral that are using Russian government bonds, if you would be able to just isolate the variation of the contract that is to do with more credit quality, and you can see if this prediction actually holds. And then finally, I was thinking about the interpretation. So I understand why the model is set up so the borrower needs to finance the project. But I think typically repos are usually used to finance securities. And I think actually kind of alluded to this presentation. So I was thinking of how you use the existing model to kind of um, fit uh, what is usually considered as repo financing. So usually I've heard to running as a security, it's used in security as lending. And the model doesn't really talk about all about repo complication, which is essentially this idea that when the lender receives the collateral, then he or she goes on and see what's the next time. So I was thinking about how to use the existing setup of the model and just maybe modify the interpretation only slightly so we can maybe you know, depending on these credits that the model doesn't just talk about securities when they are not on the And my idea was to do, um, was to maybe think about PL, which is the probability that of the lender thinking that the project will succeed a little differently. So maybe we can actually think about as the lender PL, the lender's preference for collateral. And so this would mean that a higher PL is associated with the lender not wanting the collateral. And that could help with critics saying that the model does not address securities lending every time obligation, because the PL would be transformed into this lender's, lender's preference for collateral. You can use the model to account for these common types of repo. I think actually everything we're going through is just literally just changing some of the interpretation of how you word things when you describe the model. Um, and so, and as I told to the stream before, I said, like, you know, please take all the comments from the brain as well, because it's really going to depend on what the word really says of what you she wants you to do. That's all I have. <laughs> So thanks very much. Uh, in conclusion, I think this model has a really, really great job of helping us think about how haircuts and repo uh, re interest rates are kind of thought about when a borrower and lender come together to negotiate financing. Thank you very much. Thank you for the next one. Thank you very much. Thank you and I have to say, this is a meeting that we will present. It's a third time we have to send meeting, and there's a paper that has been on their wall. No other paper, I will have the same thing with the session. So, thanks a lot. We have been great so far, and this is also another opportunity in this. So, and uh, so I'll talk about my market fund and the price of set assets. When I aim to have you set assets, it's a few bills that we post. And uh, it's going to be all US. And uh, we're going to be discussing about uh, how the market fund is being in these markets and the pricing and how different markets for assets affect the market funds for the assets. I don't have to do this in the Soviets, but this briefly go through what is why we care about this. They are huge, they got even bigger since the first world of this run, and uh, since the total assets are the management, it is more than five trillion. It started off with 20% of the US GDP and about 50% of US commercial assets as well. And around three trillion of these uh projects from the management that are held in safe and liquid of the board of the board near money assets, which are tables, repos that they do with banks are going to be interchangeably with people of the bank my market funds the university was the banks that could have the banks. And their investment set of banks uh are a nice kind of every pro, but 
So these are the three different customers that we have. And the motivating factor for this is one, money market funds are big in the table market. So here you see um, the solid line here goes to the side of the people market as time goes by, and the dashed line shows you the percentage that's held by US men. So on average, it's somewhere between I don't know, 15 to 20 percent, and you're recovering to a company about five percent. So they are really interesting. And here it's the total trade uh, total treasury market of And the other interesting thing is. Here I'm plotting the, the portfolios of the market funds over there. And uh, you have the holdings of zeros, you have the repos with banks, and this is showing you the RRP investments in the banks are investing. And what is very interesting about this is there seems to be some sort of correlation going on between how they allocate the funds between the zeros and the RRP. And the liquidity conditions in the treasury. So we're going to start with this interesting motivating uh, lines. And we're going to find some part of the data, which we like uh, the theory, have uh, predictions, that's done. And then so the other uh, interesting findings that we start with it with is on the left hand side, what you see is funds with a high share in the repo market. They also have a high share in the TV market, and all the other And this is true even conditional on assets under management. So big funds are in the repo market and big in the TV market. And on the right hand side, you're seeing basically the same thing that I showed you on the other graph. So the x axis is the Bloomberg Treasury illiquidity index. The higher this number is, the more illiquid the Treasury market is. So it's basically a yield curve fitting there. So Treasuries that have the same maturity, we're going to have multiple of these. We fit the yield curve, the bigger the dispersion it is, it's a cross for the advantage of the elastic constraints. So that's a show in the market is more liquid. So a higher number here is the treasury market is more liquid. And the uh, y axis is showing in the share of T-bills in my market funds, t bill and our units. So what this is saying is when there's less liquidity, they invest less in the less in the so that's another motivating factor. So with this, so, uh, right the theory where we're going to have strategic interactions of money market funds with each other and with banks. And the key insight, which I think is a very interesting thing that I haven't seen anywhere else, is that if you're a big player and you act in different markets, then and you can impact prices in the two markets. Then the two markets are going to be connected through the quantities or the portfolio choice. And your decisions and the conditions in, the, in one market will affect the decisions and conditions in the other. So that's kind of the key insight that we build our the, the theory. And here in this paper, specifically to the money market plan, we're going to analyze this trade off of. I'll call it loops the market power, but it doesn't have to be. It's just a shortcut. So what, what really is going on is you have prices back in the repo market, which you can choose, which you can influence. And then there's another market which you also have prices in the back, but you cannot really choose that. And that's going to be the trade-off. So you can think of it as money market funds have market power with certain banks. You can think of it as the yeah, is a bargaining game, that it's their bargaining power. You can think of it as relationship building and so but it's really like a price impact that you need. And the main result of the theory is going to be if, for some reason, the repo rate becomes higher, banks will demand fewer repos. You will have more residual debt. So this is going to be more residual debt, meaning everything you have that is not because of the banks. That will increase your typical demand. That will and then we're going to take it to the, the, the data. We're going to have two parts. One, we're going to look at the aggregate data. So we're going to be interested in do money market funds actually have noticeable price impact in people, which we care about. And uh, so, what, what we find is when they bring more cash to the people market, the impact is people rates relative to the Fed's RRP rate is going to go down. 
and naturally the liquidity the liquidity premium on these bills is going to increase. And this effect is going to be a little bit right. So one standard deviation of our very low interest is going to correspond to the same number as uh, one percent is quite higher than without the uh, you know, And what we're going to do is we're first going to show you in just a little bit less, but also we're going to have a discrete variable regression that directly comes from the model that we show that actually this effect is causal. So anyone can not see it also get the price. And what I apologize to Adam is that he basically two days ago found another idea that basically accounts for a lot of the obvious problems with this approach. Which uh, is going to give us the same results, but we did not know about that. So you just learned about it this smart. So, so that's the macro part. And then in the micro, we're going to have granular only level data set where we're going to show that exactly the mechanism, the main mechanism of the that is money market concept, and internalize the price effect in the table market, which is secondary importance. And also, we're going to, so what I showed you in terms of the liquidity in the just aggregate data, we're going to tie it to the very granular setting as well. We're going to show that when the treasury market liquidity is low, we pay less more. If you look at fund time and data, we pay less more in the RRP compared to tools. And this has a whole set of policy indications, which I'm not going to talk about now, but I'll keep Okay, so the theory, quite simple. They have repos, they can invest in repos with banks or tables. If this was the case, solving the model would be quite easy to the market. But what really complicates things is the RRP. So we have three different markets that they have been in. And the uh, price setting process, they set the repo rates. And there's a probability of deal that depends completely on the fund size. If you're a big fund, so that's what I mean by market power versus like, anything else you can call it. But if you're a big, there is a high probability of getting the deal for a set price. But then also the probability of the deal also depends on the deal being for the banks have the power of so big natural deals. So if you think of it also the banks also have some sort of power this is a great bit of control from what is yeah, so banks have down stuff and that's spoken the night or more repos, so then you set the repo rates that you know this is just and on top of that, the treasury will be great. Is going to be determined by market theory and money market funds are one layer out of many in the treasury of the market, so they have a they have price effect. So, what really complicates things a little bit is the RRP rate. There's a price effect that's set that inextricably by the FM. So, we then assume to get in the data what we see is so, I mean, think of it as these are very substitutable as a stimulus like RRP. It's just that one has a higher price than the other. I would expect you to go to a corner, but then there's a price effect that makes you not go to the corner. And we also execute for some theoretical reason that I don't understand makes it a little bit easier, but we don't strictly need it. We also assume a non monetary cost for investing in the RRP that makes sure that we get an interior solution in the RRP. And what's going to happen is the RRP, which is the fixed rate, which is competing with the tables, is, is going to alleviate, but the, will not completely eliminate the trade offs that the concept is. And the key result here is going to be what I said. But what is nice is we're going to have a variable here that's only going to be in the theory part, that is only going to be affecting the repo rate, but nothing else. But there will be a chain reaction of things that are happening, which really looks like a great story for it. And this is what we're going to use as an analogy. So we're going to have if the, uh, the repo market is concentrated, if the fund repo HHI is higher, we're going to have higher repo rates. It's going to be a concentrated market. The market funds will have more market power. Repo rate will increase. Repo rate will go down. This will have an increase. It will be much less increase. So we're going to face this in the aggregate data in the IP setting. And uh, yeah, the other thing is when the treasury market is low, they will invest more in the RRP predictions. So we'll have five decimal predictions. The main variable we're going to be using is the return to a cash share, which is whatever you did not invest in. So all the money you have to that you did not invest in those. So just the same here, or most of you 
notice my reason. So what we're going to do in the data is we're going to take so government funds they are invested in government securities so because are part of it or because collateral by government securities. So all these three assets are actually the bread and butter of these funds. But there's also prime funds that are also doing these things, but they can also invest in unsecured uh, instruments uh, by banks. So then commercial papers, deposits, etc. So for them, we're going to include them because they are for the market, mm -hmm. but we're going to completely describe the uh, unsecured files of the portfolios. So you can think of it as the prime funds and uh, cash management problems or whatever you did not lend to banks. You have to manage somehow, and you can actually get these three assets. And so for government funds, it is really what they do. So, so the first two predictions are going to be in the macro data. The higher the residual cash is, whatever you did not invest in repos, that will cause people rates to go down. The second prediction, the higher the residual cash there is, you will assign a higher liquidity premium for repos. And in the micro data, we're going to find that fund market power or market size, we're going to market share, we're going to, we're going to measure it like that. The higher that is, the higher the repo rates are, not surprising. But the kind of more surprising prediction is that the higher T bill market share among all the other market funds will lead to lower repo rates. So you will internalize if you do not. If you set a high report rate, you will have more money to bring to the people rate, but then you internalize the fact that you will have prices back and people rate will fall down. So you already reflect that when you step into it. And finally, the portfolio allocation is the lower the treasury market liquidity and the higher the treasury price is back, the more the share of your investments in the Fed's arguments. So basically, this is the this is what we less than much. So we're going to have the one month people rate minus the RFP rate that takes into a couple of the macro factors that are basically incorporated into this. A bunch of controls that are ascending in the literature, and our very good interest is going to be residual cash. So we're going to be using two instruments. One is what our theory gives us. So I'm going to be focusing mostly on that one. That is the repo market HHI. So this is the channel that I told you. This is a relevant instrument from the eyes of the theory because there's a direct link between the informal market and the and the residual cash share. And in the theory, there's no other link between the informal market and the HI outcome variables. So the exclusive restriction would have opened an ideal world. But you have so far from the ideal world. So what I'm going to do with it quickly is to say the theory blindly and then tell me what might go wrong and my fixes which are better than those problems. So this is our uh, instrument. Forget about the dashed line. The solid line is the repo market XHI. A few things to take away here. Just less variation before the uh, reform. So the big jump is the mind market uh, reform. Before that, there's less variation. After that, there's a bit more variation. And uh, you also see the relationship with the Swiss with the first stage, maybe the long of the first stage, the HI and the X axis, and the residual cash on the Y axis. There's a much stronger relationship between the two in the post And to the yeah. And our data is going to be basically coming from the, the SEC filings of the minor funds. So it's February 2011 to end of 2022. We're going to use the uh, detailed month and sector of set for the voting level and the aggregate data will be very similar. So, and the person's new statistic results. So this is our first. So this is our aggregate regression, which is we're regressing the one month people rate minus RRP on things. And these are the things. So the first column is this is the standard regression in the literature. This is what the uh, one that and other ends say for basically it's very apart from the sample period, it is the same regression that they have. And what we find is exactly what they found. Next, I'm doing OLS with adding our favorite variable of residual cash share. It's quite remarkable that the R squared actually looks quite dramatically. So we go from 25% to 1%. There's a lot of uh, variation there. 
get to that this uh, last year. So then I'll show you the first stage. The first stage is it's the right side, it's quite strong. I mean, not too strong in terms of the statistic, but I'm going to look more about it. And the second stage result is this is what our theory is. The theory says there should be a negative relationship between the individual of my entirety and the individual. Economically, the magnitude of this, the partial of the fact that the one standard deviation higher money that my market becomes second, the negative brings to this market is going to be equal to the two parts of the the one percentage point higher than the bond rate, or a third of the one standard increase to the legal supply of energy. But there are many things wrong with this in terms of the exclusion. So the exclusion restriction is not going to be holding us well in the empirical environment in the theory. And this is how we have this. So first, you might say if banks demand differently from different types of funds, and that also correlates with the people rate. I don't see how, but we got this comment. So the way we deal with this is we take out bank time fixed effect from every single uh, contract that we see, and with the residuals, we reconstruct the HHI, and nothing changes. So the reform theory I, would be an ideal thing to test, but it's also the atomic method of exchanging at the same time, so the reform theory actually is not so important. So then we go, okay, because so the keynote observer that shared the Nico HHI that I showed, Looks very much like the government share of the entire fund industry, and that violates the exclusion. So, what we do next is we focus on the post form theory, the period, and then we show that the result is the same. We do the same thing with the alternative basic type of the bank that takes the out, the result holds. Next, what we do is we control, we take the post form, we control for the share of government funds. And then instead of the fund level HHI, we use the fund family level HHI, which is less correlated with all these obvious things that are correlated with the macro outcomes, we find the same as well. And then this is what is new, and it's not going to be a discussion, which I think is very good, is we forget about the HHI. And we say, okay, as an instrument for how much money the market funds are bringing to the digital market, let's use the fact that. At quarter ends, European banks withdraw from the European market. And at every quarter end, that's a different number. Some days, some, some, so from February to March, it might be 40 billion. From May to July, June, it might be like 80 billion, etc. We have uh, yeah, 48 quarter ends like this. And I would say the more European banks withdraw from the market, that is very exotic. The more money money market funds will have to bring to the TIBO market. And let's use this changes in the European people as an instrument for the residual capital. What is remarkable is it's a completely different instrument, but what we get is the, the same number. And if we only look at the post reform, we get a higher number in magnitude. So what this tells you is money market funds have become more important than the TIBO market in terms of the pricing time after the reform. So that is fine. So this is then showing the same thing with the liquidity premium. Let's see this. So if we look at the, the micro data next, just to illustrate the mechanisms we have in the model, we construct two measures. One is fund market share in the bank repo, the second is fund market share in the treasury market. And um, the, the prediction is the higher the fund market share in the, in the repo market, the higher the repo rate should be. We have a lot of fixed effects control for the show economic factors. The result is exactly what we expect, but stable over different specifications. And the higher the material market share, the lower the market rate, which is internalizing the impact in one market and the other, it's lost. So if you say, okay, why are you doing funds? You should use one family. We do that. And then this result is. Uh, just what I said, when the treasury market liquidity is slow, the fund market share in the treasury, which is you have a high, high share, which means you have a high price effect, that matters more when the liquidity is worse in the field of And this is what we find. 
what else? Skip this quick because talk about the process of cases. And uh, yeah, so why do we care about all of this? This is quite crucial in the transmission of uh, one of the bonds, as I have the experience here. So we know that when the Fed funds rate increases, there are inflows to the money market funds. And if there is a people price impact, that will reduce, that will cause downward pressure on people rates, and that will just be the transmission mechanism. So that's one reason why we get Second, the size of the central bank balance sheet is important for the bank. So a large balance sheet, which is unlimited amount of our availability, would alleviate all this concern. But if you want to operate with a small balance sheet, you have to think about high market chances and their price effect and their demand for the future generation. Second, having decided to be on pool, the treasury market liquidity is important that for uh, the transmission of monetary policy. And then you will say, okay, there's some somebody's leaving money on the table. There's, there is an arbitrage, and why is not being made? And the answer is it's the government. The government can actually tilt their issuance for a while to basically cater to the money market fund demand to actually make more money. So the price impact on the money market fund side means the government would actually move its revenue. And then you can think of how the echo bus is going to be a good place. That's my trade. It could be the NFA in life. Simple frictions in the, in the money market bond sector, which could have more spillovers, which is something that we should be going on. And finally, if you take the role that the people play, you don't manage the system, then the money market fund frictions can also be to come up their global spillovers. And that's also something that's great. I talked with the current Um, all right, so the people what I want to do here is talk to you like where the picture stuff is. Um, if he has a certain empirical model, which I find so I thought that I think there's nothing, it's his own empirical approach. I was thinking the back of the micro, maybe it's his fault because we saw it like six problem limitations. So it's too much to discuss. Uh, um, so I'm going to go soft model and then go look at the But the picture of my degree in the paper, which I think mentioned in the six, it looks like how the other behavior of money market funds affects US money markets. All right. Step um, so two, and the highlight is that these money funders, especially active in the developed strategy, tax markets, really casinos, it's like an American casinos, as well as facilities. And I think this is really cool. So I think it's really cool. They get very serious about the fact that they have out. Right? These are large players, but they make moves in the market and they affect the prices. And hits are making very interesting. And they get taxed to know about a few people on the asset before they stop making this stuff. So I thought about it. Um, so I think it's very exciting that um, it's something actually I wanted to make with myself, but the people on my dealer is really happy to do it. So they had this, uh, it's, 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 uh, they just approach uh, what does this mean? Um, and what's the goal of this? So then you will bunch, so they write on the bottom, they write on some other people that establish the effect of sort of market power that they spend money, sort of are active in the repo, they should be like that, they should be like that, they should be like that, they should be like that. Then they have a huge discussion about where this is going to go. Okay, so I'm not going to have a discussion, I'm going to have a little bit more. Thank you. So if you're going to have a session, I'm going to have this already. Um, so I think it's more of a portfolio problem. You have to, they talk about the TV source in assets. I just think more of the direct retail and the TV facility. And then the external empirical work, which I think these are great characterizations. Like, you know, you have, mark, they mark the like, internal line of the average between prices in one market and also between prices in the other market. They put more money into the retail, they put more money into the TV, and decide how the TV is going to happen. So, um, there's a second part about the facility, but the facility 
that the public entity is not going to affect the spot or how to affect how they come to the behavior. Um, it's going to play out less. And then, of course, they can just as it provides. Okay. So, currently, um, but if it's trying to have a model that has a good state to follow. So, the first is the money that I have is on the other hand, which has a good test. The first stage is to actually look at the new rebound. Then the second stage is the money is on the lower and it's like the best location of the email is in order to get this done. Right. And both of those, the case now is something that I think of both of those places they think about how they're going to affect prices in the past and how they're actually going to have that model. It's a great conversation. And again, science is the key on stuff. They have implications, you have implications, they have the same thing. So, I, my main reaction is that I don't often see this kind of work in this market. So, I think it's really important to do it and to trace it. I think I'm going to have to engage the model and raise the market's bodies. And so, I think it's very important to see this. Um, I think if you read the paper, you can recognize it's probably a PIP. Right? So, it's, I can always read the model that like, wait, I would do this very that way. But I think you can draw a little things that regard the innovative work is going to be into a style of the world. There are also comments about the high movement, definitely not going to take a leave it. So, one thing is, I think you really quite understand why it's just a state of the And I think it probably is going to be a little bit easier to solve. Um, but I think it'd be much more intuitive to the reader that just would model and find some of the funds, which is what the bucket saved. They said, really, they think that's their money, and you got repos, you got to the facility, then you can sort of divide the public and sort of play. If you're going to demand a base for services to your markets, you know, how they have to do that. I think it's been a lot more intuitive. I actually think a lot of the same sort of group, but I said, not how much is it as you know. And it's not like the two stage thing kind of really difficult to follow, and I don't think there's a sure of multiple engagements. Another thing I had, like, the team was sort of drawing the paper, you were sort of discussing how you talk about the team building, which is repo versus dependability. It wasn't quite fine to sort of like how about this one, so it's hard to say. And when I think about how money is like, about so when you think about the team bills, there's no, you know, there's no kind of practice. This thing about the whole security. So I think it's an adverse thing. The guys are just moving to them. Actually, I can see the ones that are about, you know, selling the people so high that they can fall for because there's so little that they can say. I really think it's like a bunch of people who don't have a balance. Right? So they know what your cash is going to pass. So you sort of think about that one. They see cash with, you know, with Goldman Sachs. That's what they think about gold. I think about Goldman Sachs. The NC is kind of kind of there. And I think about the collateral piece of sand. Right, so you can already see that these things are sort of different types of things to take to take action for what we're This one's really good about hard This one's really good about kind of hard risk. But then that still used to be a risky risky for overnight rate. Right. But I think actually the repos are dependent on the things that are close, you know, uh, they're close on the two. So I think you know if you sort of look at it that way, if you're thinking about it that way, you know, we need to make more life facts and work. I think a lot of stuff you care about is subjective, right? And they can move the T-bill versus the three bill, you should look at how the dynamics are just in case that we just think of my own thing about the right. Okay, so um we don't want our comments. We don't want to shine a drop down. Yeah, I'll do this. My main internal comments we watch you like how to change. So I'll do that. But um I'm gonna go back to back. So uh oh you said okay. So the first thing was that uh no that's fine. You know, you have the car the size of the pond um the but the site the market might have we're gonna get to you started to end the week over to the site the kids are ready to go from people like there probably is definitely call the next time that's a good question. You know, so it's really good to recognize how much people will go after a five and click that kind of size. What's how to make it five and check it size? So I decide, I think it's just probably pretty simple. You decide on the characters if you should have drive, but it's going to have to be better when you can get to that generate the size of it. Um, and this is how the contract fair, but it's like, you know, so far, but you know, the, the money funds operate to be free built, they operate to be slow, and it turns out. You know, they deal with these security dealers, the securities are also exposed to the system. They know they're also on the building on the page. So that's shocking. It's evil not to only directly affect the, the money fund by pursuing some deals, but it affects the dealers who then are also showing the repo. So it's a, it's a little bit of a parent. You already used to have to get down the way to the data. So it's sort of like the repo. Um, and then this thing I got kind of interesting about, right? Um, so I know a lot about repo. 
And I say that because the honey mine is following the capital. Okay, so all those five and six days, all the five and six days, this is what I want to do. Yes, I can get up to one desk. Okay, so that's what this is for the original country, which is both the end of 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 the end so one thing is that so you like I told you this morning if you're looking away from each guitar, I just saw this I from each guitar that I finished it. I I just finished that. So I had a lot of coffee that is together about the instrument. Um so I told them you're gonna move away from that and I have to play one thing. I can talk to you for doing that. And I was just talking. I think that's really so people how I kind of want to go to this. I just think it's it's not gonna be fun. And then I had these small comments. Um, so I don't just really change things for what you call micro stuff. Right? So you had basically the people rates, how to do the people market share, the people market share. And I thought what was really cool about that is that you know, you're consistently finding the top politics to engage in that. It's a negative situation. Can you operate to your chair and an out of the situation? I guess I thought it was really interesting. But all the time I read the body picks, I actually jumped out to me. Um, and uh, I don't know. I was going to talk about this in a minute. I don't know if that's my topic. But I first read Alpha, I think it's on the battle. But I have to use such a change. Right? And I thought it was really cool. I didn't feel that's consistent. I don't think that might be probably bad. Um, so, this is what I did. So I just want to emphasize that for this particular, guess what I want to say, first thing I have to talk about First of all, I think you, you might be doing too much on paper. Right? It's like a beautiful model, you know, all this stuff about the following, the following, the following, the decision following. And then you might want to talk about the following, the following, the You might just rely on research, right? On the new publication, like, uh, you know, like the, the index, the kind of remote software, like that. You have to just work through this. Um, I think that the model is sort of really cool. Uh, I think we make it so simple for people to understand that you can run with it. And then I think um, I'm excited to go to the CYP. There's no idea to report. You know, yeah, maybe I'm doing it okay. Um, um, and I should say, I, I think we do have to speak for that. 